All right, guys, welcome back to exciting round of videos again. We are going to be in this. You will have to get most your information from these or your book or at least reading the PowerPoints. So let's begin. We are going to be talking about the lymphatic system and body defenses. Most of you guys know the lymphatic system as your immune system. Technically, it's your lymphatic system. Let's figure out why. So first of all, Yeah. So this is actually is your lymphatic system. Notice there's all kinds of things. It looks like it's kind of connected. It looks like it's connected by blood vessels because you see like this stuff going down. We'll call her 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 leg. Really, that's not blood. That's lymph. Um, and so what lymph is is all this other fluids that go into the blood. And so we'll talk about that more in a little bit. So the main functions of the system is to get those fluids back into the blood and of course um, help your body in defense and resistance to disease and that's what we usually think about it. And so you'll see these are all the major parts and you've talked, you've heard the word lymph nodes so we're actually going to talk about what that is. So some of the characteristics, that lymph, like I said that excess tissue fluid that's carried by all of these lymphatic vessels. Um, the vessels are a one-way system towards the heart. It picks up any fluids, returns it to the bloodstream. So it doesn't go from the blood to lymph. That's not how it works. It always goes from all this extra stuff that's found, gets it into the bloodstream, and goes from there to your heart. There's also capillaries, um, and the fluid leaks into these lymph capillaries. Those then, and I'll show you a picture here in a little bit, spider web between the tissue cells and the blood capillaries. So here's the picture I was talking about. In the kind of purple color here are the blood capillaries. The intertwined through there are the lymphatic capillaries. So this blue, purple, red is what we experience in cardiovascular. So you have your blue veins going on. Um, towards the heart, the capillaries, kind of interspersed arteries going away. Well, another part in this are these lymph, lymphatic capillaries that are going all throughout here. And if you look at the close-up, they're actually able to, they have one-way valves to get um, out into the bloodstream. You can see some of it being picked up in there. So this is a closer look. Um, so there was those capillaries that we were just looking at and in those we have a whole bunch of lymphatic collecting vessels that have valves. Notice the valves is going to shoot up this way. It can't go back out mm -hmm. and that is going to hold all that lymph. And so in there you get when you get a lot of those lymphatic collecting vessels it'll go up into a lymph node. And so, a lot of you, like when you have a strep throat or something, you're filling your throat, your lymph nodes, see if they're swollen. This is what you're looking at. Because if you have extra lymph, there's probably some kind of infection going on in your body. So, it's collecting the stuff from the blood going up to the heart. And so, I just said, um, I said, yeah, I said all that. Alright, your different lymph nodes. They're going to return the fluid from your veins near the heart. You have two different ones. And so you'll have to know the difference. Um, you have your right lymphatic duct. So on your right side, notice it's not your entire right side of your body. It This empties anywhere from your right arm to the right side of your head. That should say and thorax. The rat thoracic duct goes to the rest of the body. So both your legs, left arm, thorax, head. So again, your right lymphatic duct, which is the blue, and the thoracic duct. What is lymph again? So it's all that material is returned to the blood. So water, all the stuff that kind of gets out. Old blood cells, proteins, 
all kinds of different things. It can also be harmful materials, bacteria, viruses, cancer cells, cell debris, all this other stuff that gets outside the bloodstream, it goes back up into your heart so that hopefully your body can take care of it. There's also the, the lymph nodes. And so they filter the lymph before it's returned to the blood. Um, and the, you have two things within two different cells in there, macrophages. Macro is big, phages to eat. Big things that eat. And so they're engulfing and destroying foreign substances. That's their job. They just go big mouths, eat everything. Lymphocytes are going to provide that immune response to antigens. And so we'll talk later about these different immune responses. It's actually a much bigger deal than you probably ever thought. What does your lymph node look like? So it actually reminds me a lot of the kidney um, and the adrenal glands, if you remember talking about those. They are kidney shaped, less than an inch long. There's a cortex, so that again should look, if you remember talking about that in the adrenal, you have the outer part that contains follicles, which are a whole bunch of collection of lymphocytes, and the inner part that has those macrophages. And this is what it looks like. So there's that cortex, that outer part, whole bunch of other stuff going on in here. And inside that's where, again, those macrophages are gonna take in. So have your medulla and your cortex. Other organs. So these are your main organs for your lymphatic system. Your spleen, your thymus, your tonsils, and Peyer's patches. Talk about each of those. First of all, your spleen. It's a huge part. Can you live without your spleen? Yes. You have to be extra careful if you get your spleen taken out? Yes. So it's located on the left side of your body. Its job is to filter blood. It destroys worn out blood cells. It forms blood cells in the fetus. And so when they were looking, if you guys remember me talking about my um, my weird blood during pregnancy, this is one thing that they always looked at, not only in me, my spleen, but they were measuring my son's spleen quite a bit to make sure I wasn't attacking him. And so since they couldn't, they didn't want to, couldn't really draw his blood out and my blood was so weird they couldn't see what was going on, they had to measure, make sure his spleen wasn't enlarged. And so you can see in here, um, the normal, this normal and then outlined is the enlarged spleen. So it acts as a blood reservoir. And so usually if there's a bleeding part, they actually really look at that. We always talk about the kidney, and yes, the kidney has something to do with it, but really you're gonna look at your spleen if there's something wrong with blood. The other part is the thymus. And so we've talked about the thyroid gland. It's a little bit different, but located near the same area. This is your thymus gland. Um, it's located low in the heart, overlying, sorry, located low in the throat, overlying your heart. Um, it functions mostly in childhood, and it is going to produce hormones like thymosin to pr program lymphocytes. So we talked about this in the endocrine system. Uh, and now the big part are those lymphocytes, and we're going to be talking about those in a lot of detail later. Tonsils. Again, something that, yes, you could live without. Are they beneficial? Yes. Um, so the picture you're seeing down here, gross, disgusting, that's strep throat. So streptococcus bacteria that has gotten caught in their throat, it's all inflamed. Um, pretty gross. So it's small masses of lymphoid tissue around the pharynx. So if you remember, pharynx is your throat. We'll talk more about that in digestive next. The purpose is to trap and remove bacteria and other form materials. Now those of you without tonsils, you're like, hey, now I never get sick. If they're beneficial, what's going on? Well, like myself, I have tonsils. They don't get inflamed They're easy. It's gonna help remove that bacteria. Those people who have tonsillitis constantly have to get their tonsils out, they get inflamed almost too easily and that's why I had to get them removed. Um, and so that's caused by congestion with bacteria. Pyres patches. So this is actually a picture of your small intestine down here, and there's these little patches of lymph tissue. And so it's found in the wall of the small intestine. It resembles actually tonsils, and again, it's the same job, capture and destroy bacteria in the intestine. The last one, and it's going to be kind of hard 
because I cut out some of that, but it's called mucosa associated lymphatic tissue or MALT. And it kind of includes all the stuff we just talked about. Pyrus patches, tonsils, and other accumulations. So it kind of puts it all together. And its whole job is to guard respiratory and digestive tracts. And that is where we're going to stop for now.